Project Playtime came out of nowhere and is basically the Nickelodeon version of Dead by Daylight. Up to six survivors, known as the resource extraction specialists, work together to try to build one big toy, all while surviving against one player controlling Huggy Wuggy, Mommy Longlegs, or the newest monster, Boxy Boo. But what details in this game reveal secrets about the original Poppy Playtime? That's what we're exploring today. Let's do it. And be sure you let me know down below who your favorite monster is from this game. In 10, Boxy Boo. Probably the biggest reveal in this game and the most interesting way I've seen a new character or antagonist be revealed is Boxy Boo, who's the newest antagonist monster with a desire to just tear you apart while looking like an innocent giant jack-in-the-box. What's with these games and having giant monsters that are focused on like kid memory objects, right? Like a giant jack-in-the-box that will tear you limb from limb while they chase you around a toy factory, and a giant Thomas the Tank Engine knockoff that's pumped itself full of too much Stephen King that it started terrorizing an entire island. Well, no matter what what? This is probably going to be the antagonist of chapter 3. I mean, I feel like that's kind of like the general consensus. And using the whole game to reveal that instead of just doing it in a trailer like they did with Mommy Longlegs was definitely a new approach. I mean, like, I get just doing it in a trailer, especially since this game is free, but it just seems odd until I remembered that since Mommy Longlegs hadn't been introduced previously, none of us really cared about the character when she was introduced in the trailer. So since Boxy Boo also wasn't established, maybe this game was them making the reveal for them in chapter 3 or possibly 4 more exciting in a way. In 9 chapter 2, the trailer for the game that I didn't think came out before the game itself and just kind of popped up on Steam and it's just kind of on the Steam page also kind of sets some rules right away. Firstly, it establishes that this is the same facility as the one from the games by giving us the same scene from chapter 2's trailer. Well, okay, not like the same scene as in like the same shot from like top-down view of Huggy's toy, but the shot of Huggy on the ground in that pose, but this time around, instead it's Huggy on the ground in that pose where you can just, you can picture the camera being above him. But this time around, the green RE specialist picks it up, which is important and I'll get to that in a minute. But then the toy reveals that it's also a monster and green stomps the life out of it, which is something I think we all wanted to do. We know that this was in fact alive thanks to the blood that is left under its head after, you know, it gets its skull stomped on. But this establishes a couple of things. One, that even the smaller toys sold by Playtime Co. are in fact humans, most likely the kids from the orphanage mentioned in chapter 2. And two, that the huggy we see mommy grab at the beginning of the second chapter trailer is as we figured a toy. And that because of that, MatPat is probably right, thinking that she had to eat a lot of the toys in the building to keep herself going and keep herself sustained. So that's fun. I don't think MatPat likes me. I had this revelation this morning. And it ain't grab pack changes. There's also some changes to the grab packs in this game, since the hands, at least, in this game are related to the RE specialist suits that you're in. If you're red, your hands are red. If you're blue, you have blue hands, etc. At least without customization. But this pulls into question what we are doing in the first game having to get different colored hands. Because any RE specialist can complete any puzzle, but the buttons that you have to place your hand on to activate the mini games are green. By the logic of the main story games, we wouldn't be able to interact with those, and we would need the green RE specialist to actually activate any mini games, making them the most essential part of the team and a first priority for any decent monster. For anyone who's playing to win as the monster and not just trying to have fun. Competitive online play would basically just become protect green, unless players could get green hands elsewhere, which is probably why they scrapped this rule for this game. But it's still an interesting discretion to point out when I need to fill out a top 10 list. Ah. You can also add cosmetics to your grab pack like any free game trying to get your money and I'm pretty sure that it has its own battle pass too but you can like you can have mommy long leg be the reason your arms can extend which is a whole other can of worms that I don't want to talk about. In its seven multiverse all of these changes however can be explained by the concept of the poppy playtime multiverse that's right we're back here and it's something that the trailer is seemingly hinting at as well and it's more than just the whole mommy and huggy still being alive thing since after all that this could just be explained away with this being a prequel, but there's more to it than that. Because, like I said, there's a shot of Huggy Wuggy on the ground in a similar fashion to the Chapter 2 trailer, but this time, instead of Mommy grabbing him, the green guy does. And then, he stomps him to death, and that's when things start going south. But the fact that they made this Huggy doll laying in the same position as the Chapter 2 doll seems significant to me. It seems to be trying to show us that while, yes, it's the same place and the same backstory, that it's not the same events in-game, or that the events of the main 
poppy playtime games don't relate to this one, which makes sense given that this could break a lot of what we think we know about poppy playtime currently, but it also doesn't mean that this can't help us figure out what's going on in the main series. Maybe it's like a FNAF world scenario and it's uh, just tied to it slightly, but not a lot just in case. And at six, Huggy Survival. Okay, when you're put on the hook in this, uh, sorry, <laughs> I mean when you're put in one of the holes in this game because this isn't Dead by Daylight, you have to play the whole Huggy Wuggy mini game from chapter two to stay alive until you're revived. You basically just gotta whack a bunch of Huggies in the face for as long as you can. However, my question is why is this the thing that you're thrown into? Because from what we know, until chapter two, these Huggies are on strings that pull them back if they get too close. Mommy cuts them in chapter two and then dies shortly thereafter. So if we're never at the location to kill her, the Huggies never get released because she cuts them to stop us. Meaning that this shouldn't be a threat at all. My other question is why is this what we have to fight against if this is meant to be a children's game? Okay, like forget why the Huggies are dangerous if other events don't occur. This is established in the series as a game meant for kids. Why is this the thing that we fight for our lives in if it's meant for children? Come on, this is a very... Very FNAF feeling sort of scenario, if you know what I mean. And also, if you're still here, hit like, okay? We we might farm FNAF content, but we're not doing it anymore very much. Speaking of which, halfway through into number five, FNAF reference? Is it just me, or does a giant gold statue of Huggy Wuggy in the center of what seems to be a play area ring any alarms for anyone else, okay? Because like, looking at this, it is a very similar layout kind of design-wise to security breaches Mega Pizza Plex with a set of stairs on either side and like I said a giant statue of their mascot in the middle and honestly with all the questions that we've had and the comparisons we've made and all the similar elements of children becoming the toys or characters that so many love and all the gruesomeness that comes with those implications I don't think that this would be very much of a stretch especially since this doesn't confirm the places or companies as the same universe but because after all it would just be a reference but it's still a fun little not to no doubt a major inspiration for the series, considering how Poppy Playtime and Mob Games was created by Enchanted Mob, who's done a lot of FNAF based Minecraft animations. Of course, they didn't intend on copying or anything like that, but they were definitely in just inspired by the series. So this would definitely be a nice reference, and I'm pretty sure something that was intended as such. In it for skins. The skins of the various monsters as well as something that could have heavy implications. I mean, Huggy Wuggy has a robot skin for God's sakes. Do you know how much that messes with me, okay? Like the original theory that we had until we figured out that people were toys was that Huggy was a robot. And that's all because sentient animatronics are always on our mind like a really old Cody Simpson song. But now it's actually a thing that there are Huggies that are robots. Is that, is that what this means? So yeah, does that mean that the, the other Huggies out there that we haven't defeated yet just might be robots that we'll have to fight in later chapters? Or is this just like a FNAF world situation where we can't be sure about it until they confirm it and they'll only confirm it if we like the idea? Like how Multiverse of Madness was meant to just be like testing for how the audience would react to Jim Halpert as Mr. Fantastic, the return of Black Bolt and Professor X in the MCU, right? Like, is this just to test things like Boxy Boo before they're added to the main canon? Or is it closer to a special delivery thing where all of these are canon and they'll feed into the main story and we'll break everything we know about the series for like the eighth time this year. Who knows? Not me. I wish I did. Then we would get more views. Ow. Getting close to the end of number three, Among Us. Now is it just me or are the characters in this trailer looking hella sus? Okay, like I was half expecting this game to be based on Among Us or like Secret Neighbor instead of Dead by Daylight because of the design of the players in the trailer. Of course, it could be a reference to the game, just like the golden statue could be a reference to FNAF. But you cannot look at me and say that they do not look like Among Us crewmates. I was half expecting one of them to jump into a vent to try to escape Mommy Longlegs. And none of them make it out of the facility, from what we can see in the trailer. So are they just like sending wave after wave of RE specialists in there just to have them all die? Or is this like you only get one shot situation? Because the answer is going to greatly alter the story of this game, or the course of the story for the series depending, okay? if it's intended to have one. 
at least. It could also just be an easy way to release the game and, and stay relevant until Chapter 3 comes out, but I don't know. This could just be the Chapter 3 that we didn't expect, and it's all freaking Among Us, because we know we all love that game, and Red is never sus, and I am not salty about any of the games I've ever had, especially ones on this channel. Also, by the way, uh, fun fact, this game is technically released under a different company. Like, this one is by Mob Games, with games in all caps, while Poppy Playtime and Poppy Playtime Chapter 2 is by Mob Games, with games only having a capital G. I don't know, some wouldn't think that it matters, but to Steam, it's a whole other company with its own page. If you didn't know, now you do. But ultimately, in a number two, RES. The RES is the group we play as in Project Playtime when you are the survivors. The acronym stands for Resource Extraction Specialist, and is the reason I've been calling them like the green RE specialists, RE specialists, etc. But this name itself has some interesting implications, since this is more so like an aftermath thing instead of a like in the moment thing. Much like the Marvel Department of Damage Control, the resource extraction specialists are seemingly trying to get whatever remaining salvageable materials are left from the facility after it's been taken over by the toys that we've been fighting against in the main game. The whole point of the survivors is to collect parts of a toy and assemble it. This is what they are completing all of the puzzles for. The puzzles basically acting like the generators in Dead by Daylight and the toy being the escape zone, where you have to get all of them in order for it to unlock, but when there's only one RES remaining, they can all run to the train. Or not, they all can, just the one person because there's only one left. Much like in Dead by Daylight when there's only one survivor, you can run to the exit. But the fact that they're trying to collect a giant toy seems like Playtime Co. is sending these guys in in an effort to salvage whatever they can from their operation and potentially open under a new name and continue their mission, kind of like Defy Media. And they could also just be looking for a toy to reverse engineer the process from, or it could be another company altogether trying to find the secrets of Playtime Co. But them all having grab packs seems to indicate to me at least that this is an inside job. And finally, in a number one, the bigger bodies initiative. I wish this was a joke, but like any seemingly innocent spin-off game, there is of course a secret story with this one. You could say that it does in fact have hidden intent or purpose. Like with most Steam descriptions, typical categories within them, you know, like what is it, how to play, features. But the thing is, these sections aren't actually named to be sections. They're like blue subheadings, but the actual subheadings for the sections are actually messages to us. Can you hear us? Can you see this? Give us a sign. Those are the first three. And by the end, we get a little bit more info with an entire block of text saying, quote, the bigger bodies initiative will fail. We will prevail. Stay alert. We will be in touch. Which is a total shift from the rest of the description. And I think I know exactly what this is. The final line of the actual game description is won't you play fair, but it starts glitching out, indicating that whoever this is has broken through and is sending us a proper message. The Bigger Bodies Initiative is a very interesting name as well, and given that the RE specialists are trying to build a bigger toy, you'd think that this is what they meant. But instead, I think that these are big monsters. Huggy, Kissy, Mommy, Boxy, I don't think they were intentional. That wasn't something that Playtime Co. planned for, or that they were intentional, but whoever sent these specialists in is fighting against the monsters and believes that they will die off. Or maybe all of this is actually the prototype communicating with us, but we don't know because part three hasn't come out yet. But if you want to know as soon as it does, be sure you subscribe. And if you want more Poppy Playtime, be sure you click the video that's about to pop up on your screen. What a segue! Thanks for watching.